My name is Elliot. I'm an alcoholic. Hi. Uh, thank you, Joey, very much for asking me to speak. Uh, this is a, a good-looking meeting. Uh, it's my first time here. <clears throat> I've uh, been sober for six years. My sobriety date is August 7, 2005. Um, I'm just going to jump, jump right into it. I was, uh, I was born um, in L.A. I'm born and raised here in L.A. Um, this one's so edgy. Um, was Said? And uh, I, uh, my parents were, they split up when I was like one. Uh, they were never married. I was a love child. Um, another word for that is bastard, I believe. And uh, my, my father was a magician. Um, and he couldn't afford a babysitter, so he made me part of the act. And I um, spent f from five years old to 12 years old traveling around with him performing um, being, being cut in half and appearing and disappearing and floating, I floated. <laughs> and uh, my mother was a crazy person. Um, and uh, sort of like a, like a sweet mix of borderline personality and, and pill addiction. And uh, she was very violent. Um, and so at, at the height of it, um, I would be locked in the house for days at a time while she, she would beat me with her fists and, and pipes and stuff. And I... Um, uh, I was I was a mess, and I, I just went through life kind of twitching and flinching. And I would um, I would go into blackouts actually before I ever drank. Um, sometimes, and my mom would start on, on a tirade, and I would just I don't know what would happen, but I would come to you later, and my whole body would be tingling like your like your legs tingle when you s sit on them wrong. And um, so when when I discovered alcohol and had my first blackout at eleven, it was it was incredible. It was exactly you know what I what I'd always been. Uh, been looking for, and um, I drank as much as possible from that point on. When I was 12, I got myself a little Cholita girlfriend, and uh, she taught me how to smoke weed. And, um, and I started smoking weed like four or five times a day, and I got busted, and I had to go to court. That was like the one and only time I ever got busted. I went to court, <clears throat> and they sent me to NA meetings. And uh, I was, it, it was kind of su like, I, it sucked, you know what I mean? Like, I went there, and I just drank the free coffee and bummed cigarettes off people, and like, wondered what had happened to everyone's teeth. And, um, uh, but then, like, they started sharing, and it was, like, these, these amazing stories, you know? And I, um, uh, uh, I, I kept going, and, like, these guys, I, I just, I really, like, learned about drugs and crime um, in, in the NA meetings. And, and these guys, like, adored me, these, like, ex-cons, um, and they took me under their wing, and so... I, uh, I started doing um, acid at 12 and uh, dropping mushrooms, developed a little pill habit, um, uh, no big deal, uh, Vicodin, Percocet, Oxycontin. And, um, then, and I was dealing to, to everyone at school, um, but they couldn't catch me. And, then I, and I was like so out there from the, the acid that I would go to school and I would just read uh, Nietzsche's Thus Big Zarathustra and Existential Poetry. And... Um, so they thought it was gifted, and um, <laughs> I ended up skipping eighth grade. Um, and, and I went to rehab the, the summer before I started high school. Um, and so when I, got, when I started high school, I was sober, and I was in honors classes and stuff, but they discovered I was not gifted. Um, the, <laughs> the, I had a learning disability called Fuck You. Um, <laughs> So they, they put me in special ed with, like, the gangsters and retards. And then um, my, uh, what, so when I was 14, my, my mother, she was declared by the court as an unfit parent, and my father declared himself uninterested. And so um, I, went, I went into uh, the foster system and um, would spend a few years in, in foster homes and shelters, um, group homes, mental institutions. And uh, I stayed sober that whole, uh, those couple of years I, I, was, I was going through that. Just cause I, I was just, you know, sick of, like, um, dudes sucking my cock and other horrible shit that happened uh, when I was a strung out kid uh, with nobody looking out for me. And um, then when I was 16, I was released from a mental institution, and my grandmother took me in in San Diego. And um, I, uh, I started, I, I'd been, you know, going to meetings, and, and people were saying, like, to drink is to die. So I tried it. I, I like had a glass of Gewürztraminer, you know, sippy sippy, and uh, I didn't die, and it was uh, it was great. And then I started drinking again and started uh, like uh, dropping ecstasy and doing harder drugs, and it was pretty fantastic. Um, and I had a you know I had a lot of like rage and shame and um, 
pain that the, the booze and the drugs drowned out. Um, so sort of fast forward, like when I was, uh, I did some cool things, I, like I traveled the world, I studied art, uh, I did the magic show at Legoland for a year. Um, <laughs> not that cool, but it, I don't know, it gave me traveling money. And um, when I was 22, I had to drop out of uh, art school because I had, was drinking so much that my s stomach herniated and so much hard liquor, my stomach herniated, I could no longer digest food and I was bedridden for uh, three months. And then um, as soon as I could walk again, I was, I was hitting the sauce. And uh, I had I'd moved into my grandmother's spare room, which I recommend if you're a grown man. And um, <laughs> sh she, would, she would like say like, Things like, Elliot, I'm worried about your drinking, you know? And, uh, and I'd be like, Grandma, I'm an adult! Um, <laughs> do what I want! So I was like, I gotta get my grandma out of my hair. So um, I decided I was gonna move to LA and I was gonna get a job and get back in school, get my own apartment, and that way I'd stop drinking, otherwise I'd wind up homeless, you know? So I wound up homeless. Um, <laughs> What happened? Because I, I couldn't stop drinking. And um, uh, I was living on top of this mortuary and like going to AA meetings and in my car and different places. And like um, I started to work the steps and I started to stay sober. And um, I worked one through three. Um, I, I, uh, my sponsor was letting me stay on his couch. And I did a, a thorough fourth step. And um, I discovered that I'm inherently selfish, self seeking, dishonest, and afraid. And I'm single, ladies. If anyone, um, <laughs> So, uh, but uh, the four step was really powerful for me, you know. I um, I, I had these I had these really victimy narratives that I had carried around throughout my life, and I and I thought I, I was a victim, and the, the world was was full of per perpetrators. And I uh, discovered that um, really I was the biggest perpetrator of all, and I was perpetrating my my victimhood on the world, and I was using the I mean, you know, horrible things that had happened to me. Uh, to justify treating other people any way I wanted to get what I wanted to take care of myself or what I thought I needed to, to feel better. And um, that, that I was incredibly manipulative and scared and I would go into situations um, tr trying to, you know, con control everybody and everything. And so um, I... Uh, like wouldn't set boundaries and then because I was afraid if I set boundaries then people wouldn't like me and if they didn't like me then they wouldn't give me what I wanted whether it was companionship or, or sex or employment and if they didn't uh, if I didn't get that then I you know I'd never get it because they're deep down I'm afraid there is no God you know and so then people would cross the boundaries that I never set and I'd feel like they were fucking me uh, but you know really I was saying like fuck me it's free I never like lay down any ground rules and um you know, and like so many other things. And even like the things that weren't my fault necessarily, I had a part in as far as uh, the resentment went. Like my, my resentment against my, my mother who tortured me when I was a kid, I uh, used that experience to create a belief system that all women are a certain way uh, so that I could justify uh, objectifying and using them for sex, you know, and never having to get close to anybody. And I did that from the, the first time I, I had sex until uh, last week. And now... Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm all better. <laughs> oh, God. So <laughs> um, I did the nine step, and uh, I went back and I paid back the thousands of dollars that I'd you know, stolen from people I could find, and uh, I made amends to my father, and, um, and uh, you know, other people, like, real amends, and it was hard, and uh, it was great. And um, after I worked the steps, you know, things, things started to change for me. I... Um, um, my sponsor encouraged me to go back to school, and I, I'd never been. Uh, I had like a fifth grade education, you know, so I went back to junior, to Santa Monica Junior College, and um, I learned how to divide. <laughs> um, and then uh, I, I did really well, and I, um, I was there for three years while I worked, and then I ended up getting a, a full scholarship to UC Berkeley, um, and I just graduated in May uh, with a 3.7 GPA, and um, it was great. Oh, thank you. Um, I got a great job right out of school making that Skrilla, and um, I got a, a, cool, a cool apartment in a sexy part of Santa Monica, and, um, uh, and I, I, I discovered that I, what I'm most talented in and what I love most is, is writing, and so I'm, I'm working on my first book right now, 
Um, and it's great. I really, really love it, you know? And I, I just turned 30. I'm going to be, uh, uh, like, I'm giving myself till I'm 31 to finish it. And, um, you know, things, things are just, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous has given me an incredible life. And, and I never forget that, you know? No, no matter how uh, good my, my life becomes, I always have to remember that, that Alcoholics Anonymous has given me that life, you know? It's, it's, like, um, it's like there's a fence, and on one side of the fence is my alcoholism, and on the other side of the fence is everything else. And uh, first and foremost, I have to take care of my alcoholism, or I lose everything else. Um, and so I continue to um, go to meetings. Um, I continue to pray uh, every day and to surrender my, my will to uh, a God as I understand God, and uh, to sponsor guys. Um, so, you know, I, I guess I just want to say, if, if you're new, welcome. We had a number of new people here, and uh, I encourage you to, to stay and to keep coming back. Um, I think you, you have no idea, you know, how, how good your life uh, can get if you, you stick around here and uh, keep doing those things. So, uh, thanks.